Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sermons from My Heart. This is Craig Condon speaking. Today we're going to talk about sin fighters. My message is based on Mark chapter 8 verses 38 to 50. Let's listen to that passage now. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. Stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 2012, Dr. Michael Youssef, who is the founder and president of Leading the Way Ministries, wrote an Christian Sunday school teacher who was leading a class of boys. After a conversation with one of the boys, the young man prayed and received Christ. That young man was the greatest evangelist of his time. On one of his trips to England, D. L. Moody preached at a church pastored by another great evangelist named F. Moody invited him to come to the United States to preach. At one sermon, Gilbert Chapman gave his life to Christ and became a great evangelist. One of the people he led to Christ became his traveling companion. That companion was evangelist Billy Sunday. After Billy Sunday preached in Charlotte, North Carolina, a group of farmers asked God to do something great for the world, starting in Charlotte. They invited an evangelist by the name of Mordecai Ham to preach in Charlotte. During one of his services, three young men came forward to receive Christ. Their names were Billy Graham, Grady Wilson, and T.W. Wilson. Billy Graham became one of the most respected evangelists of our time, and the Wilson brothers became administrators with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. While we are on earth, we will never understand what God is doing through each and every one of us. We will understand this only when we get to heaven. One lone Sunday school teacher impacted generations of Christians by doing God's work. If that one Sunday school teacher can have such an impact, just think of how our ministries or our gifts can be used by God to impact the world. In Mark chapter 9 verses 38 to 50, we read that in their struggle for position, the disciples were upset to find that an exorcist was casting out demons in Jesus' name, especially since recently they were not able to heal a demon-possessed child. Every mature Christian can be drawn into turf wars in the church. Jesus said that anyone who does God's work in his name is a partner in ministry, not a threat to ministry. There will be no peace in our world until we have peace in our hearts. God loves us all the same. God's will is for liberty and justice for everyone. We do not have peace in our lives if we try to protect our turf or destroy the weak among us. In Jesus' time, salt both preserved and seasoned food. It also came with impurities that could make it useless. Jesus tells us to get rid of the impurity of selfishness and show the purity of self-sacrifice for the benefit of others. Any little thing we do in Christ's name will be rewarded. Jesus tells us that if there is nothing distinctive about our lives, it is no good to us to be followers of Jesus. There is no use in following him if we don't make any real contribution to the life of the world, or if there is no redemptive power flowing through our lives and our actions. So what does it mean to be a salty believer? Let me give you an example. Legend has it that a missionary was swept overboard while traveling on very high and rough seas and was subsequently washed up on a beach at the edge of a remote village. Nearly dead from exposure and lack of food and fresh water, he was found by the people of the village and nursed back to health. He lived among them for 20 years, quietly adapting to their culture and working alongside them. He preached no sermons and made no personal faith claim, 
neither did he read scripture to them. But when people were sick, he sat with them, sometimes all night. When people were hungry, he fed them. When people were lonely, he gave a listening ear. He taught the ignorant and always took the side of the one who had been wronged. The day came when some missionaries entered the same village and began talking to the people about a man named Jesus. After listening for a while to their story, the native people began insisting that Jesus had already been living in their village for many years. Come, one of them said, we'll introduce you to him. <clears throat> the missionaries were led to a hut where they found their long lost companion. All sacrifices we make to serve Jesus are accompanied by hardships, suffering, or persecution, so we should not be surprised when these things happen. Believers are purified through suffering and persecution. Jesus was not commanding self-mutilation when he said that if your tongue, foot, hand, or any part of your body causes you to sin, cut it off. He was talking about the importance of doing whatever it takes to actively oppose sin. For example, if an addition to pornography causes you to sin, Cancel your internet service and stop buying adult magazines. Professing Jesus' name means melting, living the life that Jesus lived. This means driving out the demons of intolerance, injustice, strife, grudges, and poverty. To name just a few. We as Christian disciples are to focus on what we are to do in Jesus' name and not be quick to criticize others who also follow Christ but do not, who do not belong to our church, church group or denomination. We must not fault people or churches who do things differently than we do. We must assume that what they do is in his name. There are many different ways to do things for God, and if someone chooses to do something that is different from the way we do things, we are not to stop them from doing it their way. We are not to be like the lady who cornered my father in the, in the post office one day and asked him which church he belonged to. He did not belong to either of the two churches in the community we were living in. When he told her which church he belonged to, she replied, Well, that's what I was afraid of. She turned around and walked right out of the post office. We must not look for labels or titles. We must look for our attitudes, actions, and spirit. Jesus rejoices when he sees mercy, justice, and compassion in our lives, because when he sees them, he sees God at work in our world. How we live the life Jesus lived is more important than having the right documents or the right membership cards. Jesus has invited us to join his eternal family. The invitation means that he lives through us so that our words and deeds might be a loving response to his grace. Jesus' love knows no limits. His compassion never runs out and it isn't limited to a select group of people with the right credentials or disposition. There is plenty of his love for everyone. Jesus is the face of the God we can't see, the God who wants to forgive all sinners, and not just a few, the God who wants to reach out and heal everyone who is sick physically and or spiritually, not just a few. We must be very careful about how the example we set influences other people. Every person is a role model for either good or evil. The best way to show love for the children of God is by loving God and keeping his commandments. Our commitment to Christ affects how we live our lives. Our lives are enhanced when we follow Christ. Our lives will be more effective and have more impact. Christ will give us the strength we need to fight our sinful nature. The burden of our sin runs away at the foot of the cross. The kingdom of God is a treasure that is worth giving up everything to get. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sermons from My Heart. The text of this sermon as well as the texts of other sermons I have preached, can be found on my website, www.sermonsfrommyheart.com. Comments and suggestions are always welcome. You can leave comments on the website, or you can leave them on the Sermons from My Heart Facebook page. Until next time, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.